Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Before we get started with work on the Farm All MD today, I want to tell you I have a new plan that I'm kind of excited about. The original plan was to clean everything up and then put it back together and paint things as need be and get it running. Well, that's a two-year plan. I don't have time to do all that work this winter before the farm gets busy again. So I have plan B and that is to do everything ahead of the bell housing this winter. So get the engine together, clean up the front bolster, new tires, get all this cleaned up, clean up the side rails for the engine, clean up all of the things that go on the engine, pretty much everything in front of that bell housing except for the hood and the sheet metal in front. But get everything else painted up, then put the tractor back together so from here forward it'll look like a new tractor again except for the hood. And then I can run it around in the summer with this old back half on it and the new engine on the front. And then next fall when things slow down on the farm again I can pull the tractor back into the shop and split it in a different way than we did this last time. Remember we split it by sort of taking off piece by piece front bolster frame rails engine piece by piece. Instead I can split the tractor at the bell housing and just roll the whole front of the tractor forward and cover it with a sheet and work on the back half and the sheet metal. That'll be a different split like I said than we did before. I can make a set of um, rollers for the front of the tractor that holds the front of the tractor upright and just slide it out. So I'm pretty excited about the new plan, but today <laughs> we've got a lot of parts to clean. This is a drive housing for the magneto or distributor. This is one of the timing gears, meshes with the timing gears. This engages the magneto drive and I got a problem here. I got some play on the gear on the shaft and that is no good so I'm gonna have to take it apart and see what's going on. There we go. Well, let's see what's going on here. Something's loosened up. I figured I would see a keyway that's been wallowed out. I'm hoping it's a worn. That's what it is. I'm happy about that. Show you this woodruff key here. See it's worn a slot in the top where the gear rides in it. It rides into the gear like this and it's worn so it's loose in the gear so to repair that all I should need is a new woodruff key which is an easy fix. No play in the keyway so it's just a matter of getting a new woodruff key. Oh, I thought I was gonna have to go hunting around for a salvage shaft figuring that the keyway had wallowed out, but it's not. Inside this magneto drive housing, and the same housing is used for distributor ignition, but there is a replaceable seal with a leather insert in it, and I'm gonna replace this seal. Fortunately, it shares the same seal with the regular M tractor, so it should be easy to come by and fairly cheap. Looking at the shaft where that seal rides, the shaft goes in here. Where the seal rides, it's worn on the shaft, which surprises me a little bit. It's a fairly clean environment in there, but it's worn onto the shaft. So if I buy a new seal, I'm going to have to check and make sure that the seal rides in a more unworn spot. We'll see. The seals usually ride in a slightly different position when you put a new one in. All right, everything's all cleaned up. I'm just going to stored away until my parts come for it. Make sure we get the little stuff. Ugh. You gotta take breaks once in a while, you know? I want to bring you all up to date on the machine shop, which is there really is no update. The, the engine's been there for two and a half weeks now. The machine shop said three weeks, so 
I'm hoping, but I'm not really thinking that it'll be back next week because when people say three weeks, usually that means six weeks or five weeks or whatever. So we'll have to be patient. It just sits in line until he gets to it. He probably hasn't even looked at it yet. And once it gets to the head of the line, then he'll probably do the work within a couple days. Assuming parts aren't needed, if he has to go hunting for parts or I have to go hunting for parts for him, it's going to take longer. So. It'll be done eventually, but there's no real way I can push it ahead faster than it is. Next up we have the air cleaner. First take the bottom oil cup off. There we go. This air cleaner is a little different design than I've seen before. I mean overall it's pretty much the same, but the crankcase breather from the top of the crankcase comes in here and it's connected to a tube that actually runs down the middle of the intake pipe and this tube is submerged in the oil in the cup when it's all installed. The basic way these air cleaners work is intake air comes in here, comes down to the bottom here, it enters below the level of the oil and the air bubbles the oil up and boils the oil and the oil flies up into a steel mesh that's all wrapped up into here. I actually took one of these apart once. It was a pain to get apart and an even bigger pain to put it back together but I wanted to see how they worked. Anyway, this is filled with a steel mesh and the oil boils up into that steel mesh and coats it. And then when the air comes up into that steel mesh, the oil coating it catches any dirt out of the air. And then at the top of this barrel containing the steel mesh is the outlet that goes into the engine. So they're pretty good air cleaner. And that's odd about the tube. I haven't seen one like that before. Man, there's a lot of cake grime in the bottom of this. Look at that stuff come up. Wowie. I got the oil cup all cleaned up and I haven't run into one yet that wasn't rusted through. I don't know if you can see it, but there's braise right in the bottom here. You can see the lump of braise on the bottom on the other side too. And what happens is even though it's filled with oil, water comes in through the intake in various ways, moisture from the air, rain, whatever. Settles on the bottom underneath the oil and if the oil's not changed off enough, it rots a hole in the bottom of these and boy, I fixed a whole bunch of them. Ah, grimy. All right, the body of the air cleaner is all cleaned up. It's interesting, I found a number of patches. It's been patched here with braids, probably where it rubbed against the hood and rubbed a hole into it. And then the breather pipe has been brazed into place as well. You know, the braces are fine. They're not pretty, but I'm just going to leave them the way they are as sort of one of the <laughs> tractor's war wounds. It doesn't affect the performance. And also, it was soldered on both ends of the clamping ring that clamps the oil uh, cup on the bottom, brazed up. Mm, it's fine. I'm just going to leave it. The next part of cleaning up the air intake system is this pipe. And this pipe connects to the intake manifold on the engine and the other end connects to the air cleaner. One thing that's unique about the MDs is on this pipe there is a little air cleaner here that supplies fresh air down to the injection pump. So we're going to take that apart and clean up the element. And of course I also have to clean up the mushroom top which goes on the top of the air cleaner. Now well, let's try and turn this air cleaner off. Ah. That was easier than I thought it would be. There's the air cleaner element inside there. There we go. Oops. This has got a filter retainer. And then there should be two of these pucks. I'm not sure if that's felt or mineral wool. I think it's felt. There's another one. And then we have a bottom filter retainer. We'll clean it all up. I'm going to reuse these felts, so I'll just soak them in a little bit of lacquer thinner. I find that lacquer thinner takes all the grease out. Takes everything out. One thing I find interesting is the way that they painted this tractor when it was new and there was nothing like this going on. They would assemble the tractor and then run it through 
a paint booth with water falling down behind the paint to catch any overspray. I'll put up a picture of it if I can find one. So you find parts of the tractor that have really thick paint on them and others that have not very much at all. Here's a case where the paint is really thick because this was right in front of the spray gun when they sprayed it. Easy to get to. Other places, not so much. Just put this filter back together. Boom. That one in. These cleaned up nice in the lacquer thinner. And I need a gasket to go in here. <clears throat> I'll have to see if my gasket kit's got one. Oh, let's see here. Little round gasket. I don't see it aside from this one. That one's a little bit too small on the inside. Looks like I'm going to have to make one. Take a little grease and put it on here so I can make an imprint on the gasket material. And then we'll just cut it out. Make sure that fits. Yep. Voila! Put her back on the intake pipe. Put this fitting on loose because I can't remember which way it faces. I can adjust it later on. There we go. I'll just put this back together temporarily to put the parts pile. I have to take it back apart when I paint it. This mushroom cap has some dents in it. There's one there. I saw one someplace else up there. I usually fill in these small dents with Bondo before I paint. And when I started doing tractors, I was nervous about using Bondo because I had read, you know, that vibration will take it off and flex and things like that. I've used it on tractor hoods and all kinds of things like this, and I've never had a problem with it. Well, that's it for cleaning today. What do we still got left? Well, I got to go through the oil pump, which I don't think will be a big deal. Famous last words. A starting tank for the gasoline. Got to swap the ring gear on the flywheel. Got to go through the clutch. Got to go through all these linkages, clean them up. Valve cover, rocker arms. Don't expect a lot of work there. Radiators got to be cleaned up to be repainted. Fuel tank, radiator shroud fuel tank mount, battery box, <laughs> lots of stuff. Most of the complicated stuff is over though until the engine gets back. So I'm still waiting on that. We'll keep pushing that rope. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.